Did you get that? Good morning. I'm Paul Brody, and we are in my shop, Mitch and I. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot new. We have a new t-shirt design, and that's basically what it looks like. I like it. We all like it. So we're going to talk about that. Finally, got the Aramaki shocks in. I ordered these in March. So I'm a very, a very uh, a patient fabricator waiting for these to come in. They came in Friday, I believe. We're going to talk about shocks and spring rates and things like that. And I got nickel plating back. I got some for the cub. This is Aramaki. So this is, this is the gas tank mount, holds the brake cable, and this is the brake lever. This is a really nice, nice form of nickel plating. It's called electrolyst nickel. And it's about half a thou thickness. So it doesn't hide, it shows everything. So if you do something nice, it shows. And if you're not so nice, that shows as well. So it's a good thing I did a nice weld there. So that's what's going on. On the on the t-shirts, they are on sale now in the in the merch department and they're on sale. That was Mitch's idea. From now till Christmas, they are approximately five dollars off. So this is a great time to stock up on t-shirts. That'd be great if you ordered some merch. We're gonna talk about shocks a little bit. I have some other work shocks. We're gonna look over here. This is a race bike I built back in 2008 approximately. So I ordered these. These are work shocks that I ordered. These are all, all black. The ones I just got are silver. So comes apart pretty easy. So we're gonna look at, at the difference between these shocks and those. I know that it's a slightly different application, but we can do things like weigh them. So this is the Excelsior shock, because it's off the Excelsior race bike. So we'll zero this, and the weight of this shock is 1356. That's 2008, that's basically 13 years ago I got that shock. This is 1425. So this shock appears to weigh more, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the springs and we're gonna weigh them. We're gonna talk about springs. So this is the Aramaki spring. This is the new one. And it's 529, shall we say. This one's only 375. Now, we talked about these springs yesterday, and these are comparable springs. The spring rate is about the same, but this one weighs basically five and a half ounces less than this spring. So, of course, I was asking about this spring here, and then I found a photo last night, and it's a, a photo of the race bike that got got stolen in 2005, and you can see that the springs are much, much lighter. This one has 10 coils, this one has nine, and the one in the photo has seven coils, and it's shorter too, and it works just as fine. So I need to get some of those really light springs. That's what I wanna do. So these shocks mount like so, and I think one of the reasons why it mounts like that, let's go to the vise and I'm gonna show you something. So this is the halfway mark of the shock. See, if I put that like that, can you see how this is the heavy side? So that's why you want this to be up because this is where the wheel is. This is less unsprung weight. And I think it's also to do with the valving, how the oil sits in the chambers here. So that's the way the shock runs. Now there's not a lot of room between here and, and the swing arm. So what I wanna show you is this. On this shock here, this is the ones I just got. See how large that is? And on the Excelsior shock, can you see how much smaller it is? Because this can fit closer to the swing arm. So this is the part that fits on there and the spring fits on top. So I made this on the Excelsior shock. This is Delrin. 
so it's light. It's lighter than aluminum. I don't think I made this. I think that came from workshop. So I need to get a couple more of these and then I'm going to be making up some sort of a Delrin spacer. So that's coming up. So I'm glad we got to talk about shocks because we're going to mount the shocks onto the bike today. Here's the shock mounts that have to go here. The, this is what holds on, on the top of the shock. So how do you locate this? So I made up some pieces. See that just slides into there and that slides into there. And now that's about the right spacing. So that is going to go like that. And that is going to hold it. See those grooves? Have you figured out what those grooves are for yet? I'm not going to tell you. You'll see later on. And then there's these pieces here. These, so I'm going to tack the inside one on. I found a washer yesterday. So let's go over and do some tacking. So I got a washer. The washer is going to sit like that. That rests on here, and then I, I put a couple tacks there, so it spaces that out just a little bit. That's what I want to do. Okay, that's all tacked. Something like that, so it's light and strong. Got this in here. So, have you figured out what what these grooves are for yet? I'm going to show you right now. If I didn't make those grooves, I'd be cutting through a fairly heavy wall aluminum tube. Look at that. It all comes apart. Just like it was designed to. So all we're left with now is the two shock mounts all tic tac in place and they're basically in line with each other. That's important. I did a drawing for the Aramaki frame back in 2001 and this is my drawing. It was on cardboard and it kind of got separated and I sent it to someone and they used it and they sent it back in a big envelope. So what I have to do here now, you see how the bike is held up by a jack. I need to set the ride height. So I'm going off the drawing. Can you see here? That's where the swing arm axle goes through and it's 15 and an eighth inches off the ground. So that's what I did yesterday. I set this ride height at 15 and an eighth right there. So I've got it at the right height. Let's talk about the swing arm a little bit here. Here's the Aramaki swing arm that got made in the shop here about a year ago or more. This is the shock mount. I took this one off. You can see how that used to go there. And this one has to come off. We got new shock mounts and I put a felt pen mark. That's approximately where it goes. But once the swing arm is on the frame and the wheel is in it, that's the height of the axle and then it, it's wherever the shock is going to fit. So I made up a fixture here. This is going to get held in the mill. It gets mitered at seven degrees. I have to choose the right size hole saw, maybe a little bit of filing. And then those get, get TIG tacked on. So the next step we're going to do is to cut this one off.
I got the middle part of the shock mount that didn't get welded. So I'm seeing if I can just get that out of there. Then I got less filing to do. That's a good fit. There we go. So I made up a couple of these. These are exactly the same length <clears throat> as the shock. So what these are going to do is going to emulate where the shock goes. And then we can, when the shock mount is in the center, it can get TIG tacked on. Let's see how it fits. This is how it all goes together. So you can see the red mark there. That's where I thought the shock mount should go. So it's pretty close. If you look here, you can see, can you see there's a gap there? There's a gap. So I think I'll look for another hole saw. It's, it's, it's hard to know exactly. I tried to... It's got a flat spot in the middle, so it's really hard to know just what size. So I'm going to the lathe now, and I'm going to countersunk here. I can save a little bit of weight on the inside where nobody sees. Got to save a few grams. Got to be. We're going to take off the struts now, put the shocks on, and that's basically, that was the goal for today. This is where we see if the shock hits the swing arm. Yeah, it's hitting. It doesn't have any 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 clearance. So this all, this here all needs to be be made smaller, and the and the spring moves up somewhat. So anyway, it's uh, it's on there. We'll we'll just put the other side on there. But I need to do some work. But we get to see what it looks like more or less. Here we go. So it needs just, it's got like an eighth of an inch to go in, but there's the shocks mounted. Just have to modify the bottoms a little bit. If you are wondering what's under the towel here, look, there's a motor. Maybe we'll look at that next time. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, that helps to fuel our channel. So we'll see you next time. 
thanks take care